We've been developing our unique, maybe crazy chicken operation here for three years. We're coming into our fourth year right now. And today, after a nice heavy rain, my main work, which feels like it's been my main work in here for the last two months, is to continue extracting compost. I've got a design idea for a summer composting operation in here, which I'll share in another video. But one thing I wanted to share, uh, last year I talked about the idea of growing crops with chickens. We've, we're experimenting with rings and having annuals, mixed results. Uh, but one experiment which is now coming into its fourth year and is really starting to come into its own in a very positive way is having crops growing in our chicken yard that are perennial, which is my main focus anyway. And I thought I'd spend a minute here and look at this absolute lush verdant wall in our chicken yard. So our chickens are fully moving through the space as you can see. And what we have here, well let me just start on the east side. So basically it's a swale uh, that I slowly but surely keep building up with more soil. We've got a Nanking cherry in here. This is its first year getting ready to really drop some fruit. And the design was basically Whoops, excuse me. What are crops that if we don't catch them, the chickens can do some good work with? And so Nanking cherry, a really great crop for us, and the chickens will eat up whatever we don't get. These hazelnuts, and you'll notice this is a theme, two by four inch welded wire. Uh, this is only two feet tall, and it works just fine. If it's relatively small in diameter, the chickens don't seem to hop in. These are hazels I've grown from seed. This is their third year and they're looking absolutely lush beyond lush. They're some of the happiest hazels I've seen. And you can see that this swale, so here's a hazel every three feet. This swale is also a hugel mound. It's where I'm burying spent shiitake mushroom logs, which periodically fruit mushrooms. And as I turn soil in here to reveal earthworms to our chickens, I'll often just throw it onto this berm and it gives us the option to throw seed. So there's kale and radish. They'll put in some corn and sunflowers in the gaps in here. But what's really getting explosive uh, are the plants that I put in three years ago. And it alternates from cultivar hazelnut to red currant hazelnut, black currant hazelnut, red currant hazelnut, black currant hazelnut all the way down the line until we get to a spotted alder, which believe it or not, that alder is only four years old and it's already 12, 15 feet tall. And so right now I'm looking due north and um, very, very high density in here. On a hot sunny day, the chickens adore being in there. And what I've noticed is that the chickens will go through and they defoliate a little bit some of the leaves that are down low. I really don't care. If you see here, every flower in front of me will be a black currant fruit. Whatever we miss, the chickens absolutely will enjoy and eat, get medicine and sugar, uh, minerals, and that'll translate into higher quality eggs for us. The shade of this system will help stimulate more last fruiting of shiitake down in here which the chickens can eat if they want. Do you want to? We'll have to see. And the sticks, logs, and random stones make it so that the chickens can't scratch the soil away from the roots of these plants. So what seems just like a feral, haggard mess actually makes it so that the roots of the plants are absolutely protected and insulated from chicken browse but they have access to the shade, the protection from wind and rain, and then they get crops raining down on them that we, whatever we miss. There you go, you can see her in action, nibbling at the leaves. It's just gonna stimulate these plants into being taller. I'm not worried at all. Last year I added, <laughs> one foot to the south, another layer here. These are honey berries, or cap, every few feet. And with these rings, I can also stool layer with soil to help promote more rooting and to use this as yet another nursery space. And you can see at this density, 
Uh, the limiting factor is light. It's absolutely not nutrition. There's just unlimited nutrient in here. There's even a Siberian apricot I snuck in. Since we've got enough light, there's such an open canopy up here. I might as well put in more tree elements, I figure. And in some of these areas, what I've done is added an herbaceous ground cover. So in here are uh, Monarda fistulosa, which are insanely aromatic. And that acts as a way to protect, every time the chickens scratch or poke at this, it releases a very strong uh, mint, you know, almost oregano smell that keeps them from scratching too deep in. So where I lack in stones, the aromatics help to protect to some extent. But overall, it feels like the stones and logs are pretty much critical if I'm gonna have success in here. There you can see an old shiitake fruiting. If the chickens don't eat the shiitake directly, pill bugs and earthworms will ultimately, and then the chickens will eat those. So it's all part of the food web in here. And it just lush beyond lush. I don't see a single drop of stress on any of these plants from lack of nutrient. The fruit load is just, I mean, this is a red currant. Every single flower has been pollinated. Basically, we're at the theoretical limit of how much fruit can come off of these plants, all being fully exposed to chicken life, which is pretty exciting. Last but not least, this spotted alder was planted. And last year, I took a run from uh, a seedless golden table grape, which is trained mainly onto the fence, which is also enjoying the excess nutrient from this chicken system down in here. This is part of our living wall of grapes and hops growing up this fence line. And I trained one of those over to this alder, and now it's into the alder, and I can top the alder. That'll release some excess nitrogen, and we can get seedless table grapes uh, way above chicken height that we can enjoy, and whichever one we miss, again, the chickens get to adore and enjoy. So here's another three-year-old from seed hazelnut growing in Utopia, as far as hazels are concerned. And another neat trick, uh, herbaceous-wise, this is all stinging nettle, about as lush as stinging nettle could possibly be. And I just planted them in again, two by four inch welded wire ring, two feet tall, a little pile in the middle, and the chickens leave that alone and the nettles just keep expanding. It's about as plush as you could ever ask nettles to be. Anyway, just thought I'd review it. A handful of plants in here, way more than is appropriate for standard spacing, but they don't seem to be complaining. And it really contributes to visual barrier from the road and makes a really lovely uh, spot for the chickens to enjoy and for us to get a ton of fruit and nuts in a chicken yard. This year we're adding goji berries all over the place. Since we don't love the fruit fresh, we'll figure they love the excess nutrient, they'll drop fruit and the chickens will eat them. And as I leave here, you can see around this little mucky pond system, we've got elderberry and aronia, blueberries, black currants, there's even calamus in a ring, all protected well enough. These rings are as good of a design as I could ever ask for. And the plants are working out beautifully all with chickens everywhere around. So, so far so good with the perennial fruit and nut bearing systems in a chicken yard. Thanks for watching.